Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Soumya Pillai and I'm with video journalist Mohammad Hamad. And we are joined by a very special guest today, Professor Heino Fakke. He's a Dutch-German astrophysicist and astronomer and he's the man behind the first images of the black hole. Interestingly, uh, he's also a pastor and he has spoken a lot about the uh, coming together of spirituality and science. So we'll have an interesting conversation along those lines as well. Uh, thank you, Professor Fakke, for joining us and uh, speaking to the print. Yes. Uh, Professor Fakke, you've done a lot of work around uh, Event Horizon Telescope and uh, your, your biggest work has been to uh, take images of the black hole. But it hasn't been like a journey of one or two days. It has been a journey of almost a few decades. Could you tell our viewers a little bit about how that journey sort of... Yes, and it's a journey you never do on your own, right? So you stand on the shoulder of giants, as they say, and uh, you at some point have an idea, and that was during my PhD when I thought, well, maybe we could see that black hole in the center of our Milky Way. And, and there's a technology that they're developing here that we could use to actually make that picture. And Ah, maybe you can do it in 10 years. Well, it took out 20 years, and it took an entire team uh, of 300 scientists around the world working together to make that uh, picture. So it was quite a journey from you know, learning about all the science uh, that was before, you know, realizing, well, there is something interesting. There may be, you know, maybe these black holes, you know, they could be seen, and they would no longer be just science fiction. We could you know, turn them into some observable reality. Uh, and get some certainty on their existence, and then to actually make it happen, which you know was all kinds of uh, detours uh, along the way, and then you know a fantastic experiment that we did together with with all these these you know many young people uh, that were involved uh, that really made it happen in the end. Uh, so when you took those first images of the black hole, uh, how significantly has those images? changed our understanding of black holes in the universe? And how will it sort of become like the building blocks for the science that happens in the future? Now? Yeah, now black holes are sort of the fundamental limit of space and time. And uh, they're characterized by the event horizon where light disappears and no information can come out. And so it's a, really the end of our knowledge, so to speak. And to be able to visualize that and show it, it really exists. You know, that's where the light disappears, where our information disappears. I think this is a fundamental change from we think it's there to, yeah, we're pretty sure it's there, right? So, I mean, uh, in science, nothing is ever 100%, but by all practical, for all practical purposes, you know, we know no supermassive black holes do exist. And so it, it's from going to something that's in your mind to actually seeing something, you know, on a screen, on paper, it does exist. And that is the most fundamental change that happened. And now we can test our theories of general relativity. We can do experimental tests of space and time in, 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 a, in a region we've never been exploring before. And, uh, and we're learning about the fascinating astrophysics that's governing uh, the physics around black holes that, you know, producing enormous amount of power that's shooting out plasma beams into the universe. All of that was just theory, and now we can indeed test it, we can compare our models to it, and you know, it's science fiction becoming just everyday normal science. Uh, Professor Falco, uh, a very interesting aspect about you is that you're a practicing Christian and you're also a preacher. Uh, could you tell us about that side of you, your faith and your religion? You have spoken about it extensively in your book, Light in the Darkness. But uh, could, you, could you talk about this? Uh... Yeah, no, I was always you know, fascinated by the fundamental questions. Um, nature of, of space and time, infinity. You know, how, how is, is, what is beyond the earth? What, is there a heaven? You know, is that, does it have an end? And does it, if it has an end, what comes beyond? And, and so you, you start thinking as a child, you know, it's, does God exist or not? And, and, and you're not stopped by your fantasy because you're going through. And so I wanted to, I was torn. I wanted to do either theology to learn about what people have been thinking about it or do physics to really learn about the universe. In the end, I think I tried to combine both by doing, you know, trying to be a good physicist and try to do my physics as good as I can and, and keeping my child, childhood dreams and childhood questions alive and keep asking them. 
and, uh, and, and considering, you know, and, and, and keeping my faith alive. You know, as, as a child, you have a very naive faith sometimes, right? It's sort of, you know, there's God and he loves you. That's sort of a simple, um, and then you ask, you know, does he exist or, or so? Uh, and it becomes more complicated as, as, a, as an adult. And, and, and you have all kinds of philosophical questions. Where does the Big Bang come from? You know, we know there's a Big Bang from, from, from astrophysics, but where did the Big Bang come from? And, okay, yeah, there were some, maybe some quantum fields and which were inflationary, expanding. It's sort of a physical explanation. And there's some natural laws. But where did the natural laws come from? Uh, what was the origin of this? And did time even exist? You know, how did time emerge out of something that maybe had no time? Uh, all kinds of these, these, these very deep questions. And at some point you realize that science will not give you the answer to where we are coming from. It's, I mean, it, gives you, it gets you to a certain point, but the deep questions where everything originates from remains open. And you have to fill it with, with a picture of your own. And, 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 a, and it's not going to be my own. It's, you know, it's, it's a shared faith, I think, of, of a large fraction of humanity that there's something bigger than that the Earth, bigger than that universe even. That there is you know, some, something more mysterious, more deeper, that we call God at the beginning and transcending everything. And uh, that's also a source of hope for, for many people. So I think philosophically it's... You, you, you need that, you <laughs> and emotionally you realize you can actually connect to it because that's sort of our home. Our real home is sort of even beyond the, the Big Bang, so to speak. Um, my next question is uh, going to be a little philosophical. Uh, as a scientist and as uh, somebody who has a uh, you know, great sense of spirituality, uh, do you think these two concepts can be held independently, or do you think that there is a coming together, a more harmonious coming together? Yeah, I, I would not call myself the most spiritual person on earth, to, to be honest. You know, I'm, I think, a pretty down to earth uh, physicist, but, you know, I'm, I, I, I do believe there is, you know, a deeper reality behind it. Um, and, and I think it's a bigger reality than just the reality that science gives me access to. Um, but also because it is so difficult to access it with, with observations, you have to be also very careful, right, to not make outrageous claims. You know, sometimes you have people who have a certain face and they have a very clear idea how the world should be. And what you learn in science is that the universe is sometimes more creative. It always corrects you and, and, and you need to find a new idea because the universe is just different from what you imagined it. And so... If you, I think it's religion opens you a larger world, but you absolutely need to be open to the input that science gives you. It will correct your understanding of the universe. If your religion doesn't incorporate what science tells you, your religion is in, incomplete, right? Because it needs to encompass, encompass everything. Um, and, and I do not believe in these being completely different worlds. We live in one world. Right? And I think what you need to do as a human being is bringing the scientific facts that you learn, that you live by, together with your hope, your faith, and maybe the love you have for each other and, and for the universe. You have to bring that together in a coherent picture. And that's a, not an easy task, to find that right balance. Uh, bringing you back to your work, uh, Professor Fake, uh, what is it that you're working on currently? If you could give our viewers a little bit of a sneak peek about what the next few years is. Oh, like. I mean, uh, right now I'm actually writing another book about sort of, you know, the history of, of us from the Big Bang till today and actually into the future. Um, and that connects to some degree to uh, black holes as well, because maybe black holes are not the end point of everything. You know, there's Hawking radiation, which says that black holes could evaporate. And we just published a paper where we said, maybe not only black holes evaporate, maybe everything can evaporate. Maybe gravity is sort of not only the creative force of the universe, but also the ultimate destructive force of the universe, which will sort of uh, make us go away again. Don't worry, it will take, you know, uh, tens of hundred years for the last black hole to evaporate, so it's not a near, near threat. Um, but, you know, black holes bring you to these very fundamental questions of beginning and end of the universe. Um, and, and so this is a big picture, 
But then we still want to understand how black holes work. And so we're now building a new telescope in, uh, in Namibia, in Africa, uh, to actually extend the network of telescopes that observe uh, black holes. We want to make movies of black holes. Uh, and eventually may go into space, building a telescope that's larger than the entire Earth and makes us, gives us really very sharp images, a sharp ring on, and, 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 and movies of black holes, like, like in, 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 in Hollywood science fiction movies, you know, interstellar, uh, you know, may become complete reality in the sense how we see black holes, right? How sharply we can see them and how deeply we can understand their physics. Um, and, and so... You know, that, that will happen in the next 10, 20 years. I think we will understand black holes, how they work, how the astrophysics works, um, and that uh, will be a normal part of physics. You know, you maybe, I'm not sure you learn it in primary school, but you know, it's, it will be something that will be very normal for us to think about black holes and say, yeah, of course, that's how they work. So the next 10, 20 years does seem to be like a very exciting year yes. for science and technology. Absolutely, yes. Uh, thank you so much for speaking with us, uh, Professor Farke. Uh, thanks to our viewers who joined us through this interview. This was Soumya Pele with video journalist Mohammad Hamad.